I lack the imagination to actually make this article I'm going to be sharing with you worse. I mean, I know what you're thinking, like, come on, Jimmy, can't be that bad. It's not like in the article he's going to suggest, I don't know, a form of discipline where you spank your wife to correct her. No, yep, that's exactly what he does. He, he does one of those. I don't. I don't really want to, but I'm Jimmy Snow. This is Dear Mr. Atheist. Let's do this. If you all have ever wondered how much I love you, I just want you to know I am so sick right now. Like sick because of the thing we're going to be reading, but also just actually sick right now. Like so sick. And this is this is the first time I've had any energy today. It's past 11 p.m. right now when I'm recording and I'm using it on you. Also, I'm very sorry that you're not going to see Sammy in the background. I am so sick that I have her with a sitter. Anyway, this is all for you. So, hey, would you hit the subscribe button and ring the bell? All right, we're back talking about biblical gender roles again. Yeah, that amazing blog that we, we haven't read an article in a while. I had almost forgotten he existed. And boy, did I enjoy the bliss that that ignorance afforded me. So he creates this article, if it can so be called, I mean, I. I don't think that I am going to gatekeep what can be called an article. He writes his article called Seven Steps to Grooming Your Young Christian Wife. Oh my freaking. Oh, I just, I can't. I can't anymore. How I was, but now I can't. I mean, I was. Remember how I was, but now I just can't. God, it do be like that sometime. Before we start reading, I actually want to share with you something that I know isn't going to be popular with a number of people in my audience because I know who uh, the demographics are. And that is this, and I can defend this if we were doing such a thing, I can actually defend this with principles of psychology. But in summary, in many, if not most cases, significant age gaps within a couple can be extremely problematic and it should be considered a red flag up until about the point that somebody is 25. After that, it's a lot harder, and that's just a general range. There's nothing special about that number. It's a lot harder, though, after 25 for it to be a significant problem. But the thing that happens, and a thing that you see that has become normalized by Christian culture and by submission culture is this concept of that the ideal partnership is a girl around 18 to 20 years old and a man around mid twenties to late twenties. Now this has been perpetuated by both sides of the culture. And there are a lot of women who express that they like an older man. And there are a lot of men who express they like a more youthful woman. However, when it comes to these specific age ranges, there are these big problems that show up because you are in two completely different phases in life. And if you are closer to that 18 year old age, you are still in this transitionary and developmental phase as you are going from being mostly dependent on your parents or whatever uh, your setup was to actually finding some level of independence. However, if that independence seeking is intercepted by an older man, that person often tries to take on the role of a parent and guide you through that transitionary phase, only it so often happens in a way that is um, advantageous to that man. So now let's get to this article. Listen, the thing that happens in biblical gender roles articles, blog, whatever you would call this thing. The thing that happens is he very expressly puts what is being culturally reinforced by things like these less progressive forms of Christianity. And he doesn't try to dress it up with apologetics. In a weird way, how disgusting he is, is at least extremely honest because there are lots of people perpetuating this kind of culture who dress it up with different words. Paul and <coughs> Morgan, actually they switched to, uh, they're a more political political channel now? Don't worry, we're going to be addressing that. Paul and Morgan, what were you thinking? Really? So here's the article. Seven steps to grooming your young Christian wife. Now I want to remind you that Larry here has written a blog about how soon a, a woman should get married, when they should be considered marriage age. And it is as bad as it could be because Larry wrote that it should essentially be as soon as a girl menstruates. 
Yep. Which I still get comments literally today. I remember seeing a comment from a person who was like, yo, that started for me when I was eight. Are you serious right now? But he will somewhat lamentingly talk about how uh, we have to still do this within legal limits and, and talk about what a groomable bride still is in older ages. That sentence, I feel like that sentence was a mess, but let's let's read here. So he starts off with a person talking about their relationship. I've read your site for some time. This is my first time writing you. My wife and I have been married a year. She's 18 and I am 24, which I want to say again, I'm not necessarily saying that relationship is doomed. However, that big of an age gap from the specific phases in life they are in, one person should be finding their independence, finding things out about themselves, being intercepted by an older person who's had some years in the real world, that should be a red flag. Flag. But if you are 18 and you're dating a 24 year old, I'm sure your relationship is fine. That was a little bit sarcastic, a little tongue in cheek. However, it's something people need to be considerate of. It is best to date people who are in the same sort of phase in life with, as you are so you can develop together. I'm six years older than her, but that just seems to make it worse. She keeps saying you are not my father. She was raised in a strict family, and I guess she thinks that now that she is married, she is free from all authority. I've recently put us both on a budget. I've created a budget, and I keep my side, but she's overspending on hers. I read your articles on seven ways to discipline your wife, and you recommend taking away her debit card. I know I could do this, but in my view, that should be the last option. I'm considering starting spanking her. I have mentioned it to her, not on the budget, but in general, and she is against it. She thinks spanking is treating her like a child because it is but also don't spank your children like there are so many studies on this listen once again and you know what i know some of you are going to be parents who spank your kids and you're going to be like "Ooh, i don't like this part of jimmy either this one i'm going to be less like i'm sure you're the exception there aren't exceptions to it the studies are in the science is in spanking your kids does not teach them better behaviors it teaches them to fear getting caught so they don't commit to not doing something because they actually see what's wrong with it. They commit to not doing something if they're going to get caught or they adjust and they figure out ways to do it still without getting caught. Spanking, I already did an episode on it. You can go check it out. Maybe I'll remember to do an info card here. I hope I do. But yeah, don't spank your kids. It's... Uh, don't do either. But yes, that is th the whole concept is treating her like a child. You consider yourself an authority over her. Like he is lamenting and complaining that she thinks she is free from all authority, which I doubt is true if she's got a job, but because she feel he feels rather that he should be her authority in their marriage. Yeah, you are treating her like a kid. Stop. Hammer time. Okay, it's not actually hammer time. I kind of want to bash my head in with a hammer right now, reading this, and because I feel so sick. So Larry starts talking about this. I'm skipping the rest of the article because you got the, uh, the gist. Grooming is sinful in humanism, but sacred in the Bible. Merriam-Webster's online dictionary defines the verb of groom as to clean and maintain the appearance of an animal, to make neat or attractive, to get in... Oh my God. Just any argument that starts with Webster's Dictionary defines like, you know, anytime you're watching something at like a speech or something and they start with that and you're like, oh, so this is going to suck. I'm OK. I feel like I have to preemptively apologize yet again. If you are a person who's right now writing a speech. No, I'm kidding. I'm not going to apologize for that. If your speech starts with the def a dictionary definition like that, your speech sucks. Start over. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just apologized a lot. But humanists see grooming as one person conditioning another person to allow them or someone else to abuse them. Yes, there's a broader term, and it's actually not from humanism. It's from psychology and people. Uh, uh, it's been studied to try and prevent abusive relationships, to try and guide people through and away from doing that. Because you also have to guide people away from being abusive, not just guide people away from, not just guide people through handling that they had been abused. Right now, our society by default trains people to be abusive. And these things are reinforced dramatically by certain religious cultures. Let's just say, for sure, the Judeo-Christian ones. Ugh. So they write, according to secularhumanism.org, a core tenet of humanism is the freeing of the individual from traditional controls by family, church, and state, increasingly empowering each of us to see the terms of his or her own, li own life. There's, an, there's a siren going on in the background. I don't know if you can hear it. This is why the concept of one person exerting control over another is heresy to a humanist, while conversely, consent is sacred. <sighs> 
He's lamenting that. If you haven't seen my other biblical gender roles articles, here's a playlist of them. Hopefully I'll remember to put an info card of those too. But he actually does lament the concept of consent and doesn't believe it's a biblical thing. And so you don't have to worry about the, whether your partner can consent and very much does not think that in marriage there's even any such thing that that you can't violate your partner's consent as in he advocates for and defends that there's no such thing as marital R word. Let's try and keep this episode monetized. Let's try. But from a biblical perspective, grooming when used in the sense of a husband conditioning his wife to be in complete subjection to him and molding her behavior to his preferences is not evil or immoral, but rather these actions are righteous, holy and required of husbands by God. Yeah. Do I, do I need to actually offer a rebuttal? And this is the thing that I am saying. I see other channels and other people just less explicitly doing, but when it comes down to the same thing, that's the message from Girl Defined. That's the message from Paul and Morgan. And it is those things that you see happen where you're like, oh, this person is not their own person. I don't, I don't believe, for example, I've already done a video on it, that the personality we see now in Morgan is her authentic self. I think she has fallen for this kind of indoctrination. That's my opinion and I'm standing by it. Important prereqs to grooming your young bride. These are the important ones. First of all, you and your bride must both be believers. That's no surprise here. They need to have had the uh, indoctrination already started before you. And when we actually see the way like people like this guy advocate for that, that's meant to be a, a, an action performed by the father before the husband. The father is meant to be preparing a woman for the husband to take over his ownership of her and his uh, demands of subjugation. You and your wife need to be biblicist Christians, which is a funny word, like if a racist, biblicist, hmm, yeah, it's a strange word, biblicist Christian, uh, yeah, there are two kinds today, humanist Christians and biblicist Christians. You know what? I have just used the phrase fundamentalist. I think it makes a lot more sense, though I guess it suffers from the same word thing that I was saying before, but uh, fundamentalist versus progressive. However, it is interesting that within Christianity, uh, these people have noticed. Now, I would say that this sort of humanist to fundamentalist scale is just that, a scale. Uh, you have people who fall very heavily on one end or the other, and then you have others in the middle who often use apologetics and cherry picking to justify their positions. Though, frankly, all the positions are cherry picked. This guy's just not, doesn't rely on apologetics much. He just goes, no, just read the words as they are. Good enough for me. But he does still do cherry picking for sure. So basically he's saying, be a fundamentalist. When has that ever been bad? Prereq three, your wife needs to be young. Even if you are both biblicist Christians, age is a major factor in a man grooming his wife. I have consistently heard from mentoring couples I have spoken with that the grooming of a bride has the most success in women under the age of 25. It's very interesting that he identifies the same age, and I've been talking about this for years. This wasn't something I came up with this. The same age that I say this is the moment where your, your intellectual development is mostly done, your brain is mostly created, but also you've had a level of independence and you've now gone out and experienced the real world as it is. Now, don't get me wrong. There are plenty of 25 year olds who didn't do that, but we're talking in generally, this is the case. You should always identify who you are and where you are and whether there is a difference. Are you one of those people who at 18, you immediately got into a long-term relationship that lasted until your mid to late twenties. And so you never actually went through that phase of soul gathering of soul searching is what I meant. And you never gained that level of independence. But anyway, uh, uh, yeah. So these programs, this doesn't work with the, the much less moldable mind of someone in their 30s and their 40s. Seven steps to groom your young bride. Step one, unlearn what your culture has taught you. Now, a reminder, culture is not great at things, as in whatever popular culture is, but what he's describing 
is humanism. He doesn't want people to take their counsel from things like humanism that would be based on psychology, that would have a scientific basis and the best understanding we have right now of these things from that perspective. And he thinks anything is a false teaching if it is, is incompatible with God's word, that you start with God's word and everything else that is incompatible with it must be a lie, even if it says that the universe was created in seven days. And we know that that's not the case. Seriously, it wasn't created in seven days. I cannot impress that upon you enough. Step two, you must learn and embrace biblical gender roles, which you like just whatever you can think of a cartoon character, a cartoon character that's like a super Bible believer would believe the gender roles are. That's literally him in real life. Unapologetically. As I said, again, check out the playlist of me covering other articles of his. Three, seek out a male spiritual mentor. Four, you must teach your wife biblical gender roles. Five, get your wife a female spiritual mentor, which again, well, as I said, these are the kinds of things that are taught by these other people. Paul and Morgan have said that exact same thing. Girl Defined, for these last several steps, have said these exact same things in the same terms. But the way he expounds and what he groups it with, obviously, is much more harsh. And they would avoid the same language. But it would not surprise me if any of those individuals read this and agree with 99%. That said, I don't think Girl Defined or Paul and Morgan in being completely fair, I don't think that either of them deny that marital, our word, is a thing, and I think they would see that as abusive and wrong. Uh, for sure, Girl Defined, based on some things they've said, mostly with Paul and Morgan. Though, there again, I don't actually, I can't say I, I would say that one with 100% confidence. They might be one of those people who are like, no, you consented the moment you got married. That was consent for the rest of your life. But I hope that that's not the case. Step six, mold your wife into the glorious wife you want her to be. A bunch of scripture stuff talks about Christ didn't give up his life for his wife's happiness. He gave up his life to purchase his wife, but the wife seems to be the world. It's a bunch of nonsense. And then step number seven, discipline your wife. This is what we're all here for, the part everybody was interested in hearing about. The verse above, okay, so Revelations 3.19, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, be zealous therefore and repent. The verse above is Christ speaking to his churches after having just rebuked them and threatening to discipline them if they did not repent. Christ associates his rebuke and chastening with his love for his churches. In Ephesians 5.25, the scripture tells us, husband, love your, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, which this is the thing where, uh, uh, this is also the verse where people say like, yes, I have to subject myself, submit myself to my husband, but he has to do this in return. So it's totally equal, even though in practice, it's not remotely equal at all. So if a husband is loving his wife as Christ loves his church, then he will rebuke and discipline his wife. Otherwise, he is not loving her as Christ loves his church. Discipline from you toward your life is crucial for the grooming process to work in the life of your wife. He's not just talking about, as you're about to see, like simple disagreements. He's not just talking about like, hey, I'm noticing something you're doing wrong, maybe specifically to me, a way you're hurting me, and I'm telling you you're wrong for it. Though, though there, there are healthy ways to have those conversations. He's talking about that a man is the auditor of his wife's morals, whatever her morals, beliefs, even her aspirations, and she must align them as he sees fit, as, his, as her authority over him. Otherwise, he needs to rebuke and discipline. So here's his ways how to. There are many ways to discipline your wife. 10 years ago, I would have been against wife spanking as the concept was so foreign to me. Like, how can we even redeem this sentence? 10 years ago, I would have been against wife spanking, but it turns out with consent and as a fun bedroom activity, it can be amazing. That's the only way to redeem this. And it's also, it happens to be true, but that's the only way to redeem this statement. How he goes with it, not redeemable. I did not know any Christians who engaged in it, but since I started this blog back in 2014, I've had the opportunity to interact with many Christian couples who engage in wife spanking, which is commonly referred to as Christian Domestic Discipline, or CDD for short. 
Hey, I've got another term for it. How about Christian domestic abuse? Or CDA for short. I have also had the opportunity to interact with some Christian husband wife mentor teams who help teach husbands how to spank their wives and also teach the wives how to accept and embrace this kind of physical discipline from their husbands. Again, just consider what you are describing. Physically hitting your spouse and with the dynamic and the differences in body types, and we're talking about a regular cishet couple, somebody who is probably smaller than you, physically weaker than you, and somebody you can dominate much more easily. They could never return this, even if you quote unquote deserved it. And you are trying to teach them a pain reflect. You're trying to teach them to remember the pain they went through when they acted wrong last time, what the painful, physically painful consequence was, so that they should fear receiving that as opposed to genuinely adopting whatever it is you think they did wrong as something they genuinely feel too. Now, the fact of the matter is the sort of things that this guy thinks are wrong. In that case, you're also just being emotionally and mentally abusive in another way. However, we're talking about the spankings right now. Based upon what I have learned and seen over the last few years, I can now say the following. I used to be against wife spanking. Then I was neutral to it as I could see no condemnation of it in the Bible. So it doesn't explicitly say don't in the Bible. Therefore, I'm neutral. Holy crap, this guy. And now over the last couple of years, I come to see it as the most effective tool a husband can use in his role as a human instrument of the sanctification in the life of his wife. He's serious. Like, that's the thing. If this was a Poe article and it was a joke, it's funny. It's not a joke. He's serious. It also wouldn't be that funny. And this is not a newly invented disciplinary tool of husbands, but rather wife spanking was fairly common throughout history before the last 50 years or so. And what did they ever do wrong before the last 50 years or so? Everything? Oh, was, was it everything? Oh, right. While it is a husband's God-given right to use spanking as a form of discipline on his wife, with or without her consent, a husband should be wise in regard to the hostile culture we live in. We live in culture which denies almost all the rights that God has given to a husband, including his right to discipline his wife. That means that if you do not have your wife's consent to spank her and she calls the police on you, you may go to prison for domestic abuse. Amazing. It's amazing that this article isn't about how to have a healthy relationship. It's about how to make sure you're disciplining your wife. Oh, but hey, you know who we got to look out for? You boys, you guys. Make sure that you're not going to go to prison for this, even though it is your God-given right. Thank goodness somebody's thinking about the men. Because just when is anybody thinking about the men? Oh, all of history? Oh, all the time? Was that when? Right. I like doing the same joke twice in a row in close succession. It's like an immediate callback. Some of the women who have contacted me over the years were raised in homes where their father spanked their mother and they expected it and even embraced the concept as they entered into their marriages. Others learned of the benefits of CDD for their marriage from other wives and embraced this practice later in life. You are celebrating people internalizing and deciding they deserve something they don't. And again, I just want to say I am a big fan of and total advocate for consensual spanking. We are not talking about that here. Y'all are wondering, does Jimmy get spanked or does he do the spanking? And let me tell you right now, watching you wonder gets me off. That was disgusting. I should delete this channel. Okay, but then there are wives who are conditioned to accept and receive spankings from their husbands through mentoring programs. I'm like choking on nothing right now and this article at the same time. These are programs where the husband and wife work together with a husband-wife mentoring team and over time a couple learns to incorporate wife spankings into their marriage. Again, this article is as bad as it could be. Like, there's, it, granted, he doesn't ever advocate for stabbing your wife, but he's talking about physical punishments. And tell me, tell me that this doesn't already exist in culture when you already have so many accounts of men who are much larger than their significant other, girlfriend, wife, or whatever, who do not see anything wrong with, in fact, feel vindicated in doing something like punching their wife in the face, which granted, he's not directly advocating for, but it doesn't say anywhere in the Bible not to, so he must be at least neutral. Then he complains about this. One of the most important things I've learned from these wife spanking mentoring couples is that it's difficult and rare to get a wife to accept wife spanking if she's past her mid-20s and especially in her 30s. So it's important to reach women with these mentoring programs while they are still young and moldable. 
So the thing I was talking about at the beginning, about being young and moldable, being something you need to be aware of so you're being cautious and making sure that you're entering only healthy relationships and why it's better to date somebody in the same phase of your life, where I'm advising caution, he's saying like, and that's the best time to get them because they will just give you their personality. It's just yours now. And whenever I teach wife spanking, I always get asked if I spank my wife. The answer is no. And the reason is because my wife comes from a moderate feminist background and she is in her mid forties, which makes her a far less moldable wife. She would never submit to wife spanking or even a mentoring program with another couple. Again, this is not to say that we as Christian husbands cannot or should not engage in discipline toward our wives, even if they are older and far less moldable than younger wives. It just means we have to use a different set of non-physical disciplinary tools with our lives. I outline these in my article, Seven Ways to Discipline Your Wife. I might read that article to you at some point, but at the moment, I think I would rather drill out my own cavities. I'm not going to do the whole conclusion, but Robert's question of how to handle his wife's statement, you are not my father, will go away quickly once she begins, understands, based upon that doesn't make sense, of the Bible that she must reject the entire adult slash child paradigm that our culture has taught her. When she replaces that with that knowledge that her husband's authority over her is actually greater, not less than what her father's authority was, things will fall nicely into place. Don't you all just want to hear from Larry's wife? Don't you all just want to hear what she has to say about, Larry is the guy's first name, by the way. I, I don't dox the last name, even though I know it now. Uh, but Larry's this guy's first name, but he's mentioned that in places. Don't you just want to hear from her? Like, don't you just know that she has one of those like, well, I disagree with a lot of his beliefs, but I just love him. One of the, because the way he like low key complains about her, I, I'd be very interested to hear from her. And especially after the divorce, or I'd be even more interested to hear from his first wife. I'd be very, very interested to hear. In fact, Larry's first wife, if you're out there, Email me, dearmratheist at gmail.com. Just saying, let's have a chat, but don't miss this last part. But one thing you never do is surrender to her desire to control your marriage. And do not fall for the lie of partnership marriage. No marriage is ever a true partnership. Marriage is always a patriarchy or a matriarchy. It might be a soft patriarchy or a soft matriarchy where no one explicitly acknowledges being in charge. And the one, basically, he just lives in this realm of don't let her control. It's the same. It's the same sort of rationale you used to see that defended like racism back in the day where it was literally like, well, either whites or blacks are going to be the people in power. So you want to make sure it's going to be the whites. It's that sort of binary thinking that gets people absolutely nowhere, except for this guy married twice somehow. What? I hate this and I don't want to do another moment of it. So thanks for uh, watching and find the ways to support the channel down below. Consider becoming a patron. It supports this channel financially. Consider also following me on Instagram and Twitter because I don't know what it is. I do really well on YouTube and I feel like so few people and like the ratio of how many people I don't post on, on Instagram enough. That that's probably a part of it. But Twitter, my thoughts get weird over there. I'm just going to keep complaining about how I don't have enough Twitter followers. Become a patron or follow on Twitter. Do all the things. All the links are down below. It's a fun time. Hit any of those links. They're all winners. They're all good. Probably. Some of them might not even work. Like if the Discord link is still down there, it definitely doesn't work. Just to answer the question, people keep asking about the Discord link. I'm turning the Discord over to being fan run because I don't want to deal with the problems anymore. So when that happens, I'm sure the links will show back up in places, but it's not going to be on this channel except for the Patreon Discord, which will still be the patrons will get their own discord. We're separating it out. It's a process. We're, we're dealing with it. Oh, and hit subscribe. The subscribe button. Would you please? You all have no idea how sick I am right now. I am like going to barf out all of my guts as soon as this episode is over. I can feel that it's just waiting. But before that happens, let me thank the wonderful people who keep this channel alive and going. A special thank you to my Orbital Cosmic Pumpkin Gods, Mabbity Babbity, Ariel, Caleb, Cat, Cynthia, Lilith, Fidanio, Doc M. Toboggan, and Creepy Vintage Things. We love Ivan Jimmy Snow. Mr. Atheist was not my father. Hit subscribe. I'm going to go die now.